what does this airplane and this airplane have in common? We're going to tell you in this episode of Celebrating Aviation with Mike Mashat. The Hughes H-4 Hercules and Douglas Skystreak were both built in California, Southern California, and their plants actually were less than five miles apart. So we're going to talk about Southern California's aerospace heritage. The number of fixed wing aircraft built in Southern California during World War II was an unbelievable 45 different types of airframes. By comparison, the number of major fixed wing aircraft built in Southern California today is only one, and it hasn't even flown yet. But we'll get more into that in a moment. The attributes that brought aviation to Southern California and brought industry and population to this area were agriculture, entertainment, and of course, manufacturing. The locale uh, had big wide open spaces. The climate was perfect. We have uh, more than 300 flying days per year. And so this became a natural environment for aviation. Here we see Muroc, the flight test center uh, that uh, started in World War II and uh, created so much incredible aviation history. In 1947, Chuck Yeager became the first man to fly supersonic at Muroc. And only 20 years earlier, another aviator named Charles Lindbergh wrote his page in history with the spirit of St. Louis. This airplane was built by the Ryan Company in San Diego. And now we're going to begin a tour of the Southern California aircraft manufacturers. Ryan was also known uh, during World War II for building the PT-22 primary trainer. And it's astonishing when you realize the amount of progress made in aviation from World War II. Only 10 years later, uh, the same company was building a jet-powered VTOL uh, fighter prototype that could uh, take off and land from the back of a trailer. Across the bay, the consolidated Volte Aircraft Company, contracted to Convair, was building all sorts of different kinds of aircraft, known, of course, in World War II for the legendary B-24 Liberator. But they also specialized in flying boats like the PBY Catalina, and later on the Convair Tradewind turboprop transport. Speaking of turboprops, they built the uh, Convair Pogo VTOL uh, fighter prototype. And the uh, F-102 and F-106, first supersonic interceptors for the U.S. Air Force. They even had a supersonic jet seaplane, although the Sea Dart never went into production. Perhaps they were best known for the uh, airliners. Convair produced the uh, what they call the Convair liner, the 240, the 340 seen here, and the 440 Metropolitan. And these airplanes were the backbone of the short and medium range airline market in the 1950s and into the 1960s. In the jet age, the Convair 880, beautiful sleek airplane, and its uh, bigger sister, the 990, uh, really uh, established commercial aviation history. Here, the 990 with its speed pods that you see on the trailing edge of the wing was the world's fastest jet airliner until the Concorde. And don't forget the missiles. Convair built the Atlas, the first ICBM uh, during the Cold War, first US ICBM. <clears throat> and it also served as the launcher for the Mercury capsule, uh, sending John Glenn into orbit in February of uh, 1962, uh, the first American to orbit the Earth. Moving up the road to Los Angeles, we arrive in Culver City at the Hughes plant seen at lower right. On the left of the screen is an area that if you're familiar with LA, that's the Fox Hills Mall would be in the background now. But let's talk about Hughes' smallest airplane, the R1 Racer, and his largest airplane, the H4, uh, nicknamed the Spruce Goose. This was the world's largest airplane in 1947. He also built the largest helicopter, the experimental XC, uh, XH-17. And that created the Hughes legacy in helicopters, the Model 300 and the uh, jet-powered 500 series. Here you see the MD-500 uh, when McDonnell Douglas bought Hughes Helicopter, now it's Boeing. 
Moving up to Burbank, we uh, have the Lockheed plant on the Burbank airport. And here you see the uh, civilian constellations and the military WV-2 warning star radar connies in the background and the new uh, jet prop Electra. In World War II, Lockheed built the P-38 Lightning and a satellite operation at Van Nuys Airport uh, produced the P-80 Shooting Star. But the Constellation was uh, <clears throat> perhaps the most elegant airliner of the 50s and uh, really set the precedent for luxury air travel. Here we see two models of the Connie, the 749 on the left and the Super G uh, center. <clears throat> and this is at LAX in about 1957. Talk about the lap of luxury. It was a different way of traveling. Each uh, of the Super G constellations had a hand-painted mural in the forward cabin. And in the jet age, uh, Lockheed created America's only four-engine turboprop transport, the Electra, which was also <clears throat> converted into the P-3 Orion Navy patrol plane, uh, which just recently retired from service. Here we have uh, Chief Test Pilot Fish Salmon posing in a pressure suit with the XF-104 Starfighter. This is the missile with a man in it, the world's first Mach 2 jet fighter. The U-2 uh, surveillance aircraft seen here at Groom Lake uh, made history, as did the Blackbird family. Here we have the uh, Air Force YF-12 interceptor version, and of course the SR-71, which went on to fame as a Mach 3 jet aircraft. The stealth era began with the Lockheed F-117 Nighthawk. And now let's go over to Hawthorne and visit the Northrop plan. Hawthorne uh, is the home of the Beach Boys in the 1960s. But Northrop started his facility here in 1939, having left the Douglas Aircraft Company. And in World War II, they built the uh, P-61 Black Widow and a whole family of uh, exotic flying wing designs. This is the uh, contra-rotating prop XB-35 and the jet-powered conversion the YB-49, this is the YRB-49 photo recon version with the two extra engines and pods below the wing. The F-89 Scorpion two-seat uh, interceptor and the world's first supersonic jet trainer, the T-38 Talon. Here we have the YB-35 with the single props. And here's an interesting uh, trivia fact for you. The wingspan of the uh, Northrop flying wings in the 1940s was 172.0 feet. Would you like to guess the wingspan of the B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber today? If you said 172.0 feet, you're correct. And now we're going to Inglewood, which is on the south side of LAX, Los Angeles International Airport, and the North American plant, which uh, again was established early in World War II and built the uh, Mustang and all sorts of other legendary aircraft. Here we see it in the southeast corner of the airport. But the P-51 uh, was a legendary machine, probably the most famous fighter of World War II. And into the jet age with the F-86 Sabre. Here you can see LAX on the north side of the uh, field on the photo in the background, not to mention an LA Airways S-55 helicopter. The F-100 Super Sabre. Uh, world's first Mach 1 uh, fighter could achieve uh, supersonic speed and level flight. The revolutionary X-15 rocket plane, which uh, first took man into space in an airplane. And even the XB-70 Valkyrie bomber, the triple sonic six engine uh, bomber prototype for the Strategic Air Command all took shape at the North American plant in Inglewood, California. We're gonna talk about the Douglas Aircraft Company, which started at Santa Monica. Here we see the beginning of the Women's Air Derby race in 1929 at Santa Monica Airport. But uh, years earlier in 1924, another uh, fl historic flight was launched with the World Cruisers in uh, March of 1924. It was a six month journey, but Douglas became the first around the world with the uh, DWC World Cruisers. So here we can see the Douglas plant well, actually, you can't see the plant. This is a fake city on top of the plant below at Santa Monica during World War II. The city was constructed to hide the factory, and this was done in other uh, locations as well. 
uh, but they were concerned about aerial attack from the coast and this kept the plants safe. By the mid 1950s, Douglas uh, really ruled commercial aviation. More than half of the production of all world's airliners came out of uh, the facility that you see on the right of this photograph at Santa Monica Airport. The DC-6B known as the thoroughbred, possibly the most successful multi-engine piston powered transport uh, first flew in the late 1940s and served operationally uh, well into the 1960s. The El Segundo Division, also on the south side of LAX, uh, built the Navy aircraft for Douglas. Uh, and the uh, D558-2 Skyrocket was also built in El Segundo. This became the world's first airplane to fly twice the speed of sound. And our final stop is Long Beach, California, where we see the uh, former Air Force facility uh, built uh, to create B-17 production in World War II, and then in 1958 became the center for jet transport production for Douglas with the DC-8. And here we see the uh, Air Force transports giving way to the jet airliner on the west ramp. And by the 1980s, uh, it was the opposite. We had the uh, airliners like the MD-80 that you see at the south uh, part of the uh, ramp and the KC-10 extender military version of the DC-10 airliner. And don't forget the missiles. Douglas built the mighty Thor intermediate range uh, ballistic missile. And this was used for launching satellites and all sorts of space exploration. And in an evolved uh, form today, uh, it is the Delta rocket. And the final airplane that came from the uh, then McDonnell Douglas factory uh, evolved from this prototype. This is the YC-15 proof of concept that evolved into the C-17 Globemaster III. The C-17 was the final airplane produced at Douglas in Long Beach, uh, ending production in 2015. And at that time, it was the last fixed winged manned aircraft produced in the state of California. What was left was unmanned airplanes. Uh, General Atomics had the Predator. Here we have the Northrop Grumman uh, Global Hawk. And coming soon, the B-21 Raider from Northrop Grumman. But it's a black program, so we can't show it to you. And this leaves Robinson Helicopter in Torrance as the remaining sole manufacturer of manned aircraft in the state of California today. They built the R-22 and the R-44 and R-66 turbine that you see here. And I'd like to just close with a, a good example of aviation progress. In May of 1955, a Lieutenant Jack Conroy, later known for his famous Guppy series of transports, uh, flew an Air National Guard F-86 Sabre from Van Nuys Airport to McGuire Air Force Base and return in one day. It was the first time that an airplane had ever gone coast to coast round trip in daylight. And as impressive as that was in 1955, here we see Conroy in the cockpit. But in 1990, this airplane, the SR-71 Blackbird, was delivered to the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, taking off from Palmdale in March of 1990. And it made the trip from a start gate over California to an end gate over Maryland, coast to coast, in 68 minutes at Mach 3.2. So what happened of all this manufacturing capability? Where did these plans go? Well, sadly, uh, they were demolished and uh, other, uh, I think the term is repurposed. Other businesses sprang up. And a good example is this shot of the uh, West Ramp at uh, Long Beach in 1972, full of DC-10s. This is taken from a helicopter. And so is this picture, which was taken last year. And now it's the Douglas Business Park, same location. And this is actually all through the country, uh, East Coast to West Coast, major air plant, aircraft manufacturing plants uh, have been uh, taken down, demolished, repurposed, and rebuilt into new facilities all over the United States. So there you have it, the story of Southern California aviation, kind of an overview, but uh, gives you an idea of the amount of uh, manufacturing capability that was out here on the West Coast uh, well uh, through the 20th century. So thank you for celebrating aviation with Mike Machat.
And we'd like to thank the uh, individuals and institutions that uh, help make these presentations possible. Hope you've enjoyed this. And until next time, take care. <laughs>